My name is Jordan Morris, and for a time, I worked for the busiest Toys R Us in the world during the 80s. Part of the job was occasionally having to build a display unit, which hung really high above the aisle. And there would be a, like a four foot tall by a foot and a half wide piece of pegboard with hooped uh, pipe, hooked pipe that would hang over the pipe up above. So you'd just kind of hang it up there. And there would be the tags that you'd pull off as a customer and take up to the front. And then you'd drive around your car to the back and you'd pick up the big boxes. So that could be anything from uh, strollers and prams for dolls to the play sets for action figures. I got to appreciate the engineering of some of them. Some of them were really rigid and held up well. Some of them were just like cardboard walls and it was almost impossible to get them to work on a 90 degree angle, like 90 degrees to the way they're supposed to be assembled. So you'd have to wire them up there really crazy to make sure they didn't fall apart. The few that stand out are the flag for G.I. Joe, the aircraft carrier. That was an impressive playset. The He-Man playsets were good. I never saw any issue with them. They held up. I remember thinking that the Death Star playset was kind of lame and that the He-Man stuff was a lot better and held up because I could easily wire it up there and it would hang off the, the pegboard at 90 degrees. Some of them came in assembled too, but so when we got to build some of them, because the manufacturer would sometimes dictate exactly how it was to be on display and other times we would put them together in the store. If there was a gap in the aisle because a, a toy line went over really, really well, you would think that a store would just fill it in with something else, but we didn't have permission to do that. So if we sold through on something and we ran out of Optimus Prime or whatever it was, we couldn't just throw in a GoBot and hope that they picked that up instead because Hasbro wouldn't have that. That was their space. If they would rather send the message that this toy is hot and sold out than to replace it with a lesser one from anywhere else. They wanted that message, so they were happy either way. It was my job to tell people we were sold out of stuff too. So some regulars would know me and come over or just ask for an employee of any kind and I'd have to tell them. They would want confirmation. We're here for a really hot toy, Toy X, YZ, whatever it was. We're here for Optimus Prime. And I would have to be the one to walk out and say, that's the hole where it will sit when we get more, but we are sold out. And sometimes I would be negotiating with a kid who doesn't care about why. The kid finally has saved up their money and they want to come in and buy one. And that part of it wasn't as fun. Occasionally, I would set one aside for a kid that I knew, not personally, but that had come in over and over and over again. And if I knew that kid was coming back every week, I might set one aside out of the box just to make sure that kid got what he was looking for and to really make his day. It was hard to explain though, to hide them, because management wouldn't have been happy with me. But if I could pull something like that off, I was happy to.